I'm Sean Martin, president and founder of Donick Snowboards. It is June 2nd. I am at Arapaho Basin. We are up here having a end of season barbecue. Been up for one run already and the carving is amazing. We're at the base of A Basin for our end of the season barbecue and party. And uh, really what we're here to do is display or show off all the prototypes we've been testing and talking about for the last six weeks or so. One of our big focuses this year was border cross stuff. We've, uh, we've got a, a good team of athletes that are really helping us test. And so what you're seeing here is just a ton of different experiments. All of these boards here are unique in some way and an experiment of some sort. This is a 185. It's inspired by my trip to Solden. It's real skinny, 15 centimeters at the waist and a 12 to 14 meter side cut. And then we worked on the Lighter Riders 167 here. And this was based off of our Proteus series. So this is actually a metal construction, uh, 15 at the waist again and a fixed radius side cut, not the variable. This is a huge amount of fun and the, the benefits of metal, but still the energy off the tail because it's that Proteus sort of feel. We do have some revs here that were uh, prototypes. And really what you're going to be able to say, see today is next year's rev graphics. So this is the graphic that's going to go on the rev. It will be available in a PTEX top sheet. There will be an upcharge for that because we do uh, die cut that same graphic in the PTEX. We actually stone grind the top surface. So you've got a really nice consistent looking top sheet. Uh, this is the carbonium texture, which will uh, still be available next year. And it, the revs will come with this graphic. We've taken all the black out of the previous graphics. Like I say, PTEX top sheets are one of the things that have got a flex, pin, uh, flex pattern change. And the, the tip extension, the very tip of the board, uh, which is this filler material in the tip of the board here, will be rubber next year. We've got some plate stuff to show you. Let's just start with the AF plate. So this is the AF plate. And what's unique about the new version is the, the hardware actually slides on the plate now instead of on the board. This is only uh, happening on the UPM version, but the reason we've done this is twofold. Um, first off, you're now scuffing the plate instead of the top sheet of your board. So the plate becomes uh, the part that shows a little bit of wear. When the hardware slides on the board, when the board bends, you're then sliding uphill. And when the board vibrates, you're sliding on a changing surface. By putting the slider against the plate, you've got a very consistent feel because the plane that the hardware is sliding on is always flat and consistent. It's not vibrating the way the board does. You've got the slider mounted so it slides along the plate instead of along the board. This gives you a more stable feel. And uh, we do have a 4x4 version of the AF system. Now, unfortunately, we could not get the slider to slide on the plate in that situation. It's going to slide on the board again. But we've essentially made these aluminum adapters. And you've got your slider here. We've thinned it up. Uh, you're actually going to gain two millimeters of stack height on a 4x4 version. That was unavoidable. Um, but the system will be set up primarily to run on a 50 centimeter hole pattern. And that's what these ones do. However, we will be using another thing I'll show you on the F plate that allows us to adjust the position of this so you can work with a, uh, with a different hole pattern or a different width hole pattern. Then let's move on to the one other plate development we have for next season. This is a 4x4 F plate. Now you'll notice that the screws on the top are mounted in a different pattern. If we flip it over, you can see that we have the sliders are moved to the 4x4. And it looks like there's a slider in the back, but this actually, when you tighten the screws down, binds. So the end result is you can slide this around in the plate in order to fit different hole patterns if necessary. 
but in most cases, racers are not going to need to. Most race border, boards, if you're talking about uh, a Kessler, an SG, a Donick, they pretty much all have a hole pattern that's at 50 centimeters. So if your stance width, if you have a hole pattern stance width that's 50 centimeters apart, you'll actually be able to just drop it on the board, access the screw heads through the holes in the plate, and tighten the plate down. So this is a 4x4 system that does not have to be disassembled as long as you are on a board that has a 50 centimeter hole pattern. Um, so that's, that's kind of cool. It, it, we were able to stay with the same sort of uh, theme that we had originally with the F plate, which was no disassembly required. You just put it on the board and tighten it down. You know what, we could show off one other thing for Bomber Industries that Finn has been working on for a long time, and that is a step-in Sidewinder, which we have right here. So maybe this is the first view you've had of it, but this is the Bomber Step-in Sidewinder. Uh, I think Finn has all the details worked out on that, finally. And I've been riding this for about eight weeks, um, and it works really well. It's lots of fun. All right, so it's been a fantastic year. I've got uh, some of my favorite team riders here with us uh, this weekend. Um, we've had some fantastic results, bunch of medals from these guys. Amy is number two in the world right now. Um, Shiloh here is uh, first senior men, U.S. National Championships. So we've had a great season, really great results. Um, and we got a lot of new stuff coming out next year. Next year is going to be an awesome year. It's an Olympic year. Amy's going. We've got Evan and Mike going. Uh, it's going to be awesome. So thanks a lot. We'll see you in the fall.